I did a YouTube short on this question, a group of senators is or a group of senators are, but there's only so much I can say in 60 seconds, so let's talk more about these groups, gangs, and gaggles. So we have the group of senators, the list of enemies, the gang of thieves. These words, group, list, gang, are called collective nouns. You don't need to know that, that's just for your information. And you can see they're often followed by a phrase that tells us what kind of group, list, or gang we're talking about. Was it a gang of wolves or a gang of friends? Oh, okay, it was a gang of thieves. So that of phrase is just extra clarifying information. And in fact, you could get rid of it and still have a complete sentence. The group gathers once a week. The list grows longer every day. The gang is here. And you can see that in these sentences that collective noun is singular. The group, the list, the gang. And it takes a singular verb. Group gathers, list grows, gang is. So let's add that of phrase back in and it does contain a plural noun, senators. So does that mean I'm going to change the verb to a plural verb? No, the collective noun is in charge here. That verb is going to keep agreeing with the collective noun. The group of senators gathers once a week. The list of enemies was drawn up. The gang of thieves has hit the city. The reason you get confused is that in the real world, when you see this phrase, a gang of thieves, what do you envision? You, you see lots of thieves, many people running around the city, stealing things. They're out of control. They're like cockroaches. You want to say they are running around. But English grammar is more discriminating than the real world, and it does require subject-verb agreement. Gang has, not gang have. To get a little more particular, this of thieves is what's called a prepositional phrase, of being a preposition, thieves being the object of the preposition, and the object of a preposition is never the subject of a sentence. And I'm going to say it again here, if you can get on top of subjects and verbs, you will have the vast majority of your English language problems solved. Got that much? Let's move on to groups, lists, and gangs. Same rules. Three groups of students are visiting. Now, why am I saying are, are visiting? Is it because I have plural students? No, it's because the subject is now plural too. That collective noun is plural. Groups, groups are visiting. Lists of enemies were found in his papers. Five gangs of thieves fight for control of the city. So groups are, lists were, gangs fight. So what I'm about to tell you applies to more informal English. In some cases, this structure, a collective noun modified by a prepositional phrase can be singular or plural. A bunch of the food is spoiled. A bunch of the eggs are spoiled. A ton of money was wasted. A ton of payments were lost. A load of trouble is coming. A load of problems are coming. You'll notice in the prepositional phrase, the object is always either a plural count noun, eggs, payments, problems, or a non-count noun, food, money, trouble. How you know whether the collective noun is singular or plural, so that you'll know whether to use a singular or a plural verb, is up to you. Well, you made that choice when you chose that noun, a plural count noun or a non-count noun. You can say food or you can specify eggs. You can say money or you can specify payments. You can say trouble or you can specify problems. And a plural count noun will get a plural verb and a non-count noun will get a singular verb, just like in real life. Food is, eggs are, money was, payments were, trouble is, problems are. Now, of course, there's more. 
Let's do what we did earlier and pluralize these collective nouns. Lots of your problems are avoidable. Lots of that trouble is avoidable. Same rule here. Even though lots is plural, it can take a plural or singular verb, depending on what you're talking about, whether you're talking about an amount, a non-count noun, or a number of something, a count noun. It gets a little crazy for me, too. That's why I like to break up most of these topics into just three-minute videos. So I hope you're just taking this in segments, in bites, and, and don't go any further when it, when it gets too much for you. So, lots of beaches appear on the map. That's a large number of beaches, but lots of water appears to be polluted. That's a large amount of water, but they're both lots of. Lots of literature is overly complex. That's a large amount of literature, but Lots of books are overly long. So a large number of books. Lots of, lots of. They're both lots of. And you can even stretch this out to other collective nouns as long as you use them figuratively. Tons of trouble was coming our way. That's a figurative use. You cannot literally weigh trouble on a scale. But 20 tons of gold were stolen. That's a literal use of tons to quantify some gold that was stolen. Now, can you do this with any collective noun? Bunches of literature is overly complex. Bunches of water is polluted. This, this does not sound right to native ears. Don't try it. A lot of and lots of are the most flexible collective nouns. You're probably wondering, though, when to use lots of and when to use a lot of. I have a lot of problems. I have lots of problems. Well, that's another story for another video. Okay, did we make it to the end? Any more questions? Any more complications? Do you want any more examples of the structures I've talked about? If you do, just put everything down below and I'll get back to you.